Amazon, the last call. We begin today's chapter with a number of surprises. We are at the mouth of the Amazon River. There are boats, and I am on top of an incredible animal from other worlds, but one that has clearly integrated itself into this territory, and did so a long time ago. This is our last program, our last program of this series, and our last journey through the Amazon River, riding on the back of a buffalo. It's going to take quite an effort for us to bid farewell to this river and friend. We're going to travel its shores for the last time, recognizing its giant anatomy, before it gives itself to the river. The Amazon River dilutes itself here in Marajo, in the Atlantic Ocean that changes it, that waits to be touched by its sweetness. That is why our last program will take place totally in this remote region of the lower Amazon, so we can attend the spectacle that takes place at the mouth of the most powerful river on Earth. We have to use local transportation to travel along it. In the River Kingdom, the craft, as we have seen throughout the different episodes of this program, are varied. This is one, for example. It's a ferry, similar to our pontoons. That is, a motorized platform capable of transporting people, animals, and merchandise down the river's skin safely and without starts. We are arriving in Sodi, the capital of Marajo, this large archipelago that is formed by river gravel before it disappears into the sea. We have been traveling for six hours since we left Belém de Pará and the ocean will not be sighted until we have covered 100 kilometers. In spite of this, a real Amazon fishing port is found here. None other than this one, the Puerto de San Pedro. It's not a coincidence that 60% of the Sore population dedicates itself to fishing. Recently caught, it is already incorporated into the local cuisine on the very dock with no intermediaries and no wholesale suppliers. When they're children, the inhabitants of this land learn the virtues and inconveniences of living by the river. They've grown up on it, and a large percentage will die in it. The crafts that do themselves up here do not know what the sea is like, and they don't need to. The river here is just as unpredictable as the sea and demands respect. Remember, the Sea River. These craft are called canoes here and have flat bows. The handrail that protects the stern and embraces the craft from front to aft, as well as the sail formation, timidly reminds us of the Spanish and Portuguese caravels. They have all been baptized and made of sapucaya and piquilla wood, two trees that belong to the jungle that feeds them.
We have come here to discover a few ecological characteristics that give this last stretch of the river its personality. Marajo is not just an island. It is an archipelago that is formed by at least 2,000 sections of marsh, savanna, and jungle. The Amazon Delta, where buffaloes graze at ease, acts as a natural cork of proportions larger than the size of some European countries, such as Switzerland, Belgium, or Denmark. Yes, we said buffalo. The Asian buffalo, or water buffalo, at the mouth of the Amazon River. These images could have been taken in India or Southeast Asia, but they are fully Brazilian. This is one of the surprises that this river gives us on our last hours together. Besides beavers, jaguars, monkeys, and jacarés, this river also breeds buffaloes with overwhelming success. Cowboys here know how to handle horses just as well as they do a herd of buffalo, a population that here in the state of Pará is over 8 million head, a considerable number. Time seems to have stopped, bewitched by the river's potion. Sode is the largest of the islands that shape the Marajo archipelago. And in spite of being a crucial point on the commercial routes that join the Amazonia with the rest of the world, it still hasn't lost its air of timid paradise. Large haciendas share this lacustrine territory the greater part of the year. The owner of this one is Eva Maria Daeg in love with this land and a defender of its natural wealth, among which, of course, is included the buffaloes. No one knows for sure when the first Asian buffaloes arrived in this Amazonian territory. Some historians assure that it was due to a shipwreck that was transporting them from India to Recife in 1930. The pounding surf brought the first specimen here to Marajo, enraged and exhausted. Today, they are bred as authentic Marajonian products, fully adapted to their new environment. Here we have the Muga, the Muga breed originally from India, and the Yafaraba, which is also originally from India. Now here on our hacienda, I only have two breeds, the Mediterranean, which is this one, and the Carabao. At the moment, there are two other races bred in Brazil. All four are bred here. The buffalo here in Marajo means everything to us. It has three functions, meat, milk, and work. It's three functions. So now that we are in the dry season, it rains very little and everything is dry. The bovine cattle, the zebus, are weakened. They become very thin. But the buffalo, on the other hand, here it is. Some are thin, but the majority are fine. And during the winter, when everything is humid, it's the ideal weather for them, the ideal environment. Their ideal habitat is here. Marajo is perfect for the buffalo.